So today it's just me and Melissa, Nige and Andrew and Paul have all gone. We've not really done any filming. We've just been doing more of the same kind of sanding and prepping. I've welded in a few more small patches um, and we are putting the rudder back in because there's some large patches to weld in the belly and discussing it with Nigel. It better if the rudder is actually in so that nothing moves yeah. um, just to kind of hold everything together. So we've dug our hole again uh, and we're jacking the rudder back up into position. Uh, and now that we've got the steering system on, maybe this evening we might actually see a bit of wheel turning causing the rudder to actually move, which will be the first time ever since we've owned the boat that we've turned the wheel and made the rudder move. Oh, that's that, optimistic. That will be, be amazing. <laughs> time lapse. Hold on one second. Before the time lapse, I just want to ask you a huge favour. You may or may not already be a member of the YouTube Sailing Channels group on Facebook, as I'm showing here. If you're not, I highly recommend joining it as a lot of your favourite channels regularly post interesting stuff there. Anyway, they're running a poll to find the most loved YouTube sailing related channel and I'm shamelessly asking you now to head over there and join the group and vote for us. We're only a little channel in the grand scheme of things and we know these things don't actually count for much except for bragging rights, but it would really put a smile on our face if we weren't. Anyway, where were we? Time lapse. <laughs> well, we've got the rudder suitably blocked up, jacked up, it's going up nice and straight. So I'm going to go and have a look inside at putting back together all of the, the gubbins, as we say, uh, the bits and pieces that make the steering wheel turn the rudder. So let's go and have a look at that. <laughs> this is a horrible, messy job. It's a horrible, messy job and I hate it. It's all disgusting and greasy, but it's got to be done. So that goes on, and I'll go and jack it up a little bit more. And throw a little bit more there, a little bit. Okay, and that's just all marine grease that was inside the tube and it's pushed it out, but it's good stuff. It's good stuff. Okay. So then, oh, ow, 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 watch your fingers. That goes on. Yeah, lovely. And again, because this has now been apart once, I know how it works. And I can take it apart to do maintenance again very, very easily in the future. It won't give me any, or it'll give me less problems than this kind of thing normally gives people. It should be reasonably compliant with my desires next time. Oh, look at that. Once it's all back together, the problem is you, you clean these things up at home and then putting them back together, they get all greasy again. So I'll have to give it a nice, good, proper clean once it's all back together. Right, I need to go and jack it up some more now. You okay? Yeah. It is, isn't it? And I don't want to wheel it around too much. I'm just going to go back in the boat and um, tighten a few things up to stop it falling down on 
anybody's head. The, the, the jack is kind of, when the jack's going up, it's kind of pushing the bottom of the, of the rudder post slightly off to an angle. So it's, it's giving a bit of resistance. And I don't want to force it because I don't want to bend anything or twist anything. Um, but it's going fine, just little by little and carefully, carefully. So we don't hurt anything. I'm going to need my Allen keys, aren't I, for that grub screw. Although I can't see that the grub screw thingamy will actually do anything very much. Let's put that back down. Yeah. Oh, I see. That's why we've stopped. Melissa? Yeah? Can you lower it just a tiny, tiny fraction? Yeah. Be really careful with it being on those logs. Yeah. Ah, there we go. Right. Okay, now raise it up, because I'm trying to get the four pins lined up at the top. Okay. Keep going up a bit, and again. Ah, uh, no, hang on. Down again. I'm going to have to put the camera down to do this, guys. I'm sorry. I can't, uh, I can't do this and hold the camera. Maybe that will be a good view. OK, try going up again now. And again. OK, hold it there. I'm just going to put a nut on one of those. You OK? Yeah, we're missing some nuts. Really? We'll find them. Okay. Um, yeah, can you jack up? <laughs> if it feels like it's twisting the shaft, then don't. Okay. What about now? Hold it there then. I'll come out and we'll, uh, we'll put the actual uh, foot in. The actual rudder gudgeon. Nigel thinks I like the word gudgeon. I like the word gudgeon too much. I do like the word gudgeon. Gudgeon is a good word. But uh, he accuseth me of overusing the word gudgeon. But I don't think you can overuse the word gudgeon. I think uh, gudgeon is a word that should be used often. Gudgeon? Yeah, it's a good right. word. Um, right. We're still away off the gudgeon. Yes, I know we are, yeah. <clears throat> oh, God. Hang on. <clears throat> Same as before. We've got that supported now. Mm -hmm. And I need to reposition the car jack so that the, the rudder goes up where it wants to go rather than... rather than where the jack's forcing it to go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go relax this one as well and just let, let the rudder relax a little bit. Now it can't fall very far. <laughs> well, at least it's now straight. Okay. <laughs> So the reason we're doing this now is because if we cut these fairly substantial large panels out from around this fitting here and that springs and moves, we'll have no chance of getting this lined up again. Well, the steering works, um, but I'm a casualty of war, I'm afraid, in this. That was possibly the most challenging mechanical job I've ever done, purely because of the access and the difficulty of holding the very heavy parts of the steering mechanism in place whilst trying to do them up and just getting covered in grease. And it's baking hot under there. So I, my face was sweating and my scalp was sweating and dripping in my eyes. So I'm, I haven't seen my face. There's no mirror on the boat, but I'm guessing it's bad. And um, 
and now I need a shower. But, yeah, uh, hence this is why we didn't film any of that. The that was last, really, really hard. The last bit of getting the rudder on took... A significant amount of time. Three or four and, hours. <laughs> uh, and it's part of the reason why we were doing it now, because the just in taking the rudder off the boat, the bottom uh, gudgeon and the top post had moved by about half an inch. Um, and so it was a phenomenally difficult task getting them to line up again and prizing them a lot of effort to prize them back into place and um, putting pressure in different places. But there you go. Give me a, a lever and uh, um, a lever and a um, what is it? A point and a lever or something, and I can move a move a mountain. I think it's Newton. I think it's Newton. There it is. Wash now. Back again. And it does work. Left goes left and right goes right. Yeah. Having got the rudder and steering assembly back together, Melissa and I turned our attention back to prepping the top sides for painting. You'll notice if you look, there's some other guys in this time lapse setting up gear and I'll explain all about that kind of now. Everybody knows that Nigel is a legend and Paul is a legend and Andy that came the other day is a legend and we've had lots and lots of help. Um, and I've done a lot of the welding on the boat myself and Nigel has been and done a lot of welding. Uh, but Nigel is doing it for free and he's driving from the other side of Manchester. He's driving hundreds of miles, and so is Andy, and so is Paul. And there's a limit to what I can ask these guys to do. And, and I was, uh, I'm looking at the scale of the job and feeling just like a little bit of a failure that I can't do it all myself, but feeling really bad for um, obviously seeming stressed about the amount of work that needs to be done. And I think Nigel and Paul and Andy could all see that I was kind of getting a little bit overwhelmed by everything that needed to be done. And it was time to bite the bullet and um, pay some help, uh, get somebody in to help. So today, Melissa and I are still standing on the port side. And while we're doing that, we've got a couple of lads uh, who are professional boat building welders and we're paying them to come and do some work um, and they've got really really stuck in and uh, they've, they've both said they would rather not appear on the YouTube videos uh, but I'll show you in a minute what they've been doing and it's just insane the quality of these guys work so um, I can't take credit for these <laughs> the, the patches that are going on at the minute but it's, uh, it's taken a real weight off my mind. It's, uh, we've had to, to obviously break out the bank account to pay them to do it. But I think it's only right. We, uh, it's, some of these jobs are just kind of beyond my level of skill, particularly below the waterline where it's really, really critical for the safety of the boat, the safety of my family, and for insurance purposes, those bits need to be done by a professional. So I'll show you uh, what what they've been doing. We're getting there little bit by little bit. I checked with, uh, with the lads and he said he doesn't mind the odd little video clip <laughs> of him working. He just doesn't want to speak to the camera. Uh, but it's all going great guns. Melissa and I have nearly got to the end of this side. Uh, the lads are still cutting and welding. Massive bending holes. There uh, you go. But at least we know it's all going to be done proper, proper, proper below the waterline. And the stuff that I've done above the waterline is absolutely fine. And if I did do those patches myself, they'd probably be okay. But at least I know they'll be okay, having been done by a professional coded marine welder. I couldn't have done a patch like that. That's beyond me. As I say, I feel like a little bit of a failure for not being able to do that, those bits myself. 
but it's for the best. Nigel would have done a fantastic job, and I'm sure he would have done. But it's it's just not fair to expect Nigel to give up that much of his time. Um, and he's already giving us enough of his time, and he's still doing the the solar arch and stuff for us. So yeah. Right, we are done with our top side sanding. We're done with our top side sanding. So we've got to clean up, uh, brush down the sides, wipe over with some tack cloths and some, tur um, some uh, thinners uh, to get off any residual rubbish. And then we can start painting. And one of the questions we get asked a lot, a lot, and I mean a lot on this channel is, why are you brush painting the boat? And there's a really good reason for it. It's because the coats that we've been doing so far have all been base coat primer. And the paint manufacturer specifically says that you must get, you must not roll on the first coat. It's either got to be sprayed or brushed to achieve the right thickness. So we're, we're not spraying in the yard. Apart from anything else, I don't have a water trap for my compressor. Uh, so we've been brushing it and flatting it back but we're going to roll this coat on now. So um, it's not just ignorance or stupidity. There was a reason why we were brush coating the paint coat thus far, and now we're going to be rolling. So um, yeah, big painting montage coming up. Wiping down with thinners before we do anything else. rolling and tipping with a Harris brush. Uh, Ian, you'll be proud of us. We're not tipping and rolling just yet. We're cutting in around the fiddly bits and then we'll be roll and tip. still watching. He's still watching. We've filled a 128 gig SD card and changed it for another card and you're still watching. The light is now starting to fade. So we can't go on much longer because we're gonna hit dew point soon. This paint's really tolerant of the dew point, so don't panic about that but we can't go on much longer. Unfortunately, we're not going to get the other side done, the port side done today, but really pleased with this.